Alright, what's going on guys? Try back again. Here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing a video of you requested talking about the science behind walkers, my thoughts on the different types of walkers, uh, Jenner's work, Milton's work uh, as a scientist looking at uh, whatever has happened to these people, turning them into zombies or walkers, and just overall giving my thoughts on that in the Walking Dead series as well as just in overall zombie shows or movies. Okay, so this is a viewer requested topic, requested by Haza Lang as people thumbed up in my last uh, video, or at this point, what video I released last, which was the uh, Walking Dead relationships, my thoughts on them, and uh, people seem to want to hear my thoughts on the science behind, you know, walkers, science behind zombies, and everything of the sort, all that includes. Well, first of all, I'll start by saying, uh, in a show like The Walking Dead, or in a movie, or these types of things, uh, just because you understand, um, let's say, whatever it is that, that's causing the transformation or the virus or whatever you want to say it is, um, that doesn't really help you very much uh, for the most part. You know, uh, in World War Z, no spoilers, but they have an interesting take on it. For those of you who have seen it will understand exactly what I mean, which is that scientifically, if they understand it, Maybe they can come up with some kind of, not a cure to transform the people that are infected back, because I don't really think that makes sense to be able to give them a cure and turn them back after they've already turned. I don't think that makes sense. But maybe scientifically um, enhance survivors so that they can better survive dancing around spoilers here uh, for, you know, for that movie. Now, does that really make sense? Okay, um, in something like The Walking Dead, I don't think that would fit. And in World War Z, it fit because you have like a worldwide scale of worldwide scientists and things like that trying to do that. But it doesn't really help you all that much if, um, if zombies were to not really attack certain people. Like, like the whole idea in uh, 28 Weeks Later is you have certain people that are immune uh, and not just immune, but that walkers won't even attack them at all. Um, now, I mean, they, they try to explain it as if, like, um, certain animals will not eat others that are sick or things like that will not do that. Uh, carnivores will not attack others that, that are sick or, or, or whatever, something of the sort. It's kind of a stretch. It, it's a bit of a stretch. I mean, especially when they're, like, rabid uh, dogs that are just, you know, ready to attack anything. It's kind of a stretch to see uh, a character like the one in 28 Weeks Later where you have walkers or zombies avoid them, you know, like, like, like go around them. Uh, I, I don't know if I really, I mean, for some things it fits, for The Walking Dead it doesn't fit. So in terms of science and what characters like Milton and um, Dr. Jenner hope to accomplish by studying the virus and, and spending their time doing that, I don't think it really makes much sense because I don't view it as realistic that they could ever be transform back, especially when their bodies are decaying. Like most walkers you'll see in The Walking Dead and after a certain amount of time in a zombie apocalypse, their bodies will be decaying down. Uh, they have no uh, sense of self-importance, uh, so they just like will hurt themselves even, will just attack people and you know even like for example with, um, with Morgan in Clear. He would set booby traps for them using rats or, or, or little creatures like hamsters and things like that. And they would walk right into uh, sticks and get skewered or things like that so that he could easily come by and just put them down like nothing. They have no uh, sense of, um, of danger for themselves. They just, they'll just go into anything. Uh, like, for example, in World War Z, uh, it's similar. You'll have walkers or zombies that will jump off buildings to, to get out of helicopter. will go right off. And I think that makes sense. For me, for me, that does make sense that they would totally just hurt themselves. So there would be no point in researching them scientifically to try and reverse the process or do anything like that because for the most part, they're all bodies are all destroyed anyway. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem feasible to me that you'd be able to resuscitate uh, a large scale of people that have been turned into walkers or zombies back to humans. So it's, it's pointless at that point. Now, in terms of the idea of smart walkers scientifically, like Morgan's wife, 
who comes up to the door and turns the door handle and kind of looks around for people, that there is some kind of processing still in their brain or, or in their mind to some degree they are still conscious to some, de to some degree, a very simplistic form of consciousness, probably similar to like a, uh, a dog or something of the sort. Uh, and even through conditioning though, um, you would find that, you know, you can teach a dog to do tricks, right? You know, um, there would be some kind of uh, memory for things that they've done many times. Like how many times has Morgan's wife turned the doorknob and, and gone into her house? Probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 to 100,000 times, depending on how long they've lived there for, right? So it would make sense that if she walked up to her porch, she would try to open the door, right? Um, that makes sense to me. In terms of the walker, like for example, in The Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 2, Guts, where he picks up a giant rock and smashes down the window with it, uh, I... That... That... I disagree with that. I think that that's a stretch. I don't think that belongs in The Walking Dead. I think that was a mistake to do that. Why do I feel that way? And yes, I know in the original Night of the Living Dead there were things like that occurring. There were walkers that did things like that. I think it's a mistake because I don't think it makes sense that the that, that walker would be smart enough to pick up a rock to smash down a window. You see what I'm saying? I don't Because that's not a natural everyday thing, occurrence that you do, like riding a bicycle. Let's say someone rode their bicycle every single day to work and back from work for five years, okay, and then they got turned into a zombie. I can, I can accept that they may get on a bicycle and try to ride it because that's something that they've done every day. In their brain, there still may be those connections, that uh, activation, that would have them try to do that. Maybe in the process if they were decaying, their leg might fall off as they're riding, or they might hit a tree or hit, <laughs> hit a car or something, which would make for an interesting kind of a funny clip. But that makes sense in that world, right? I, I would think so. Or you could have a walker like, uh, maybe like a taxi cab walker, a taxi cab driver in their cab driving down the street, you know, or something like that. Like, you see, that to me makes sense. But, but going and picking up a rock and smashing a window, that is a higher level of reasoning because it's something that you wouldn't do on an everyday. It's not a habit, right? Habits would be easy to repeat because in the brain, the activation would just go through uh, because you're so used to doing it so many times. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, things that you do more often in the brain will develop larger portions. Your brain physiologically changes inside your head based on what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you didn't know that, now you do. You're welcome. Um, so if you study math every day for five or 10 years, at the end of that five or 10 years, if you were to write a test against somebody who does not, do, does not even do math at all, you would smash them. Even if this person is a genius and you're stupid, if, <laughs> if you are a stupid person and this person was a genius, if you did math every day for an hour a day for five or 10 years, and this guy didn't do any math at all, but he's got uh, gifts, He's gifted from birth in math. It doesn't matter. The guy who's doing it every day for five or ten years would destroy this guy. And, and almost any test you can think of math related. Uh, why is that? Because the brain physiologically changes based on habits, based on what you do every day on a day-to-day -day basis. So, walkers, I can see. How does that relate back? Well, it relates back because depending on daily rituals, depending on what people would do in their lifetime, before they turn, they may still have an idea of how to do these basic functions or habitual uh, things that they do on a daily basis, tasks. Okay, so that's my thoughts on that. In terms of the walker climbing the ladder in guts or starting to climb the ladder, his muscles have not atrophied that much to that much of a level yet because it's close to the beginning of a zombie apocalypse. He was probably turned within a week or two previous to trying to climb that ladder. I'm okay with that because that's like riding a bicycle. That's a simple, you know, function of climbing that, you know, you could have monkeys climb trees. That's a simple function that doesn't require that much intelligence to do. Would he be a great climber? No. It, that to me fit and looked right because he's, he's stumbling, he's trying to climb, but he can't really. In terms of uh, spider zombies, that Spider-Man zombies that climb on top of each other to, to traverse a hundred foot wall, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm sorry, that doesn't. If human beings, even if Walkers have no have reckless abandon for themselves, have no have no consideration for hurting themselves. 
doesn't mean they would be able to stack on top of each other and climb a 100-foot wall. I'm sorry, whoever, whoever came up with that idea, I would have to say is stupid. They wouldn't be smart enough to look up and think, if I climb on top of this guy, if I pile on top of this guy, and he piles on top of me, and yada, 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 we'll get to the top. They, they just wouldn't be smart enough to do that. You know, they'd be walking around like this. You know, they wouldn't look up and think, oh, what about if I... No, I'm sorry, I, I, I disagree with that. I don't like the logic behind it. I think it's I think it's stupid. So, something like that, I don't think fits. So, my opinion, I like intelligent walkers to a degree, just like Morgan's wife, or like George A. Romero did in Land of the Dead, or some of the other zombie movies. If you guys have not seen Land of the Dead, do yourself a favor, look it up. You can probably watch it online now. Land of the Dead is a good one. Uh, and especially when it comes to intelligent walkers in this topic, really cool. Um, because you have one walker that was a butcher before he was turned. So as a, as a walker, as a zombie, he walks around with a cleaver, a meat cleaver. And he will use it to kill people so that they can eat them or to cut whole, like to cut into a fence or things like that. Again, I like it. I'm cool with that. Now, there's a few exaggerations. Like one guy's a mechanic and he pumps gas in, in, into a car as a walker and then lights it on fire. That's a little bit of a stretch. But the butcher, I like the idea of a walker butcher that walks around with a butcher knife cleaver and is just trying to cleave up survivors. <laughs> it's brutal, but I like that. I, I think that's damn cool. I'd like to see some more stuff like that in The Walking Dead. So more intelligent walkers in The Walking Dead would be fun. I think they should add that in season four or season five or whatever the case may be in the future. So to a degree, the science of walkers, I mean, there's some activation in there. Do I like the idea of characters being immune so the walkers will not attack them? No, generally I don't. I think it's kind of a stretch, you know. I mean, you can kind of try to explain that based on animal behavior, but it's kind of a stretch because they're like rabid dogs, and rabid dogs will just eat, like, any meat they see. I don't think they, they look stop to look at it and think, wait, is this, is this creature healthy or is this creature not healthy? Because my... My dietary system, my, my immune system, I don't want it to become weaker if I am to eat. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> There's no way. They're going ah, to attack, you know, anything. So I don't like that idea. I like the idea of fairly smart walkers due to, due to uh, rituals, daily rituals in their lives beforehand. And uh, in terms of studying walkers and that whole bit, I think it's totally pointless for characters like that in a zombie apocalypse that are surviving at that level to try and do anything about that. Maybe if you had, you know, a UN or something like that, like a bigger established military bunker or something like that, you could have some scientists studying them and trying to understand them and trying to do something about it. But for the most part, it seems like they're wasting their time. Another cool movie for that is uh, Day of the Dead, where you actually have Dr. Frankenstein, they call him, and he's performing experiments on walkers and all these types of things. So it, in that instance, I do like it, but... Um, for the most part, it's basically useless. It certainly didn't help Milton to survive himself at all. That's for sure. Except for maybe that weird jacket thing that he built. So that when he got bit, like a, like a, I'm trying not to swear on my channel. When he got bit, like a, when he got bit on the, on the wrist forearm area, it didn't penetrate because he had his super suit that he made. <sighs> Waste of time. Waste of time. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the science of walkers. You know, in terms of how that can affect the plot, intelligent walkers. I have done a more uh, detailed video on smart walkers in uh, my channel. So if you guys are interested, search that. Just type in smart walkers my channel. You'll find it uh, in the search uh, hourglass uh, tool. And um, pretty much just my thoughts all around on the science behind walkers. It is a virus um, that they all, like, basically, like Jenner said to Rick, they're all infected, so when they die, they will turn. So that's a useful piece of information to know, that whenever anybody dies, because they're already infected, the, the virus uh, will remain dormant until that point, and then it will take over once they die. Does it make sense? Could it ever happen in the real world? Uh, I don't think a virus like that could ever really re cause people to reanimate. I mean, if we can, I mean, we could try to scientifically engineer a biological weapon like that, but um, I don't think it would be to the degree that they would survive for years after. Like two to three years after, there wouldn't be any, you know, due to malnutrition, it, it, scientifically it wouldn't make sense. They would decay too fast, and if they weren't given food all the time, it would be really quick. Plus, can't you get, if you just bite, um, you know, like a, like a living uh animal or creature, couldn't you get, because it's not cooked raw meat like that, 
couldn't you get like bacteria like wouldn't that wreak havoc on your system to bite a living you know like like just just like that and swallow and everything and the bacteria on their skin or whatever I mean just scientifically I don't think it would make sense that they would be able to survive over the long term so maybe something like the infected in 28 days later or something like that would be more realistic I do like their approach at it of in 28 days later how they explain how uh, they created this uh, this virus that, that caused this this rage virus uh, and I do like that and I think something like that could be possible in the real world but in terms of undead uh, creatures that survive for or people turning into zombies undead that survive for the next you know I don't know two three years five years ten years whatever indefinitely um, that doesn't make sense to me that doesn't make sense to me. so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video this one was a bit of a long one my apologies for that I try to keep the length down on my videos but hey sometimes interesting topics get me talking and this is one of them for more video suggestions please write them below I do take them into consideration and I'll call it here that's it for this video guys I'll see you for the next one this is Trev and I'm saying peace